Hi there, friends. Fantastic recipe today. Chicken cacciatore. I got it in there. It's delicious. You're going to love making it. Remember, subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. And don't forget to ring the bell so you get a notification every Thursday when I do a new video. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you exactly how to make this delicious chicken cacciatore. Well, let me show you how easy it is to make that chicken cacciatore, friends. And remember, mise en place. We got to have everything ready in order to do the recipe and be comfortable cooking. This is the kind of channel we have. For those of you that are new to our channel, we have everything ready, mise en place, and then we start cooking. Okay, so let's go over the mise en place. Um, bacon or pancetta, whatever makes you happy. Onion, onion, we got to have onion in there, folks. We got bell peppers today. I got the little ones. They're in season right now. So we're going to use them. I'm going to show you how to cut them properly. We got little tomatoes. You got those little tomatoes these days. You know, they have the golden tomato. If you have them, you have them. If you don't have them, you don't have them. We have beautiful chopped tomato. I use a, uh, uh, an Italian Lavalle tomato. They're like a San Marzano tomato. They're very, very sweet. They're delicious. A little bit of tomato puree. We got some oregano and sage in there. Put whatever herbs you want. That's very flexible. We got some beautiful olives. We got Kalamata olives, well, Sicilian olives, so Sicilian olives in there. We got some parsley. We got some lemon zest. Then we're gonna put in, and we're gonna, st and then at the end we'll put some uh, non-carel, non parel capers, very small capers. And then we got some Kenti Classico. Then we're gonna put in as a wine in there. Let's get going. We got everything ready. I'm using a dark meat. Friends, you can use whatever makes you happy. Okay, some people like a light meat better. It's really up to you. I'm roasting, I'm uh, uh, pan frying my chicken to get a beautiful caramelization. I'm doing it in a roasted garlic olive oil. Use a good olive oil, whatever makes you happy. Uh, remember, it's just cooking, eh? not rocket science. Whatever makes you happy. That's what's beautiful about cooking. It's yours. You make it however it makes you happy, okay? So let's go. So we got the chicken already dusted in flour. That's part of the mise en place. You can see it's sticking. And we want to make sure the oil is hot. And what temperature are we looking for? We're looking for 365. So it's nice and hot, okay? So we're going to go in and we're going to put this on high. We got the pot going over there. And in the pot, in the pot, friends, we're going to saute. We're going to start by putting the bacon and the onion. Remember, onion is always first, first, unless we got bacon. If we got bacon, then we're going to use the fat of the bacon. We're going to render that fat, and we're going to use that fat to saute the onion. All right? So we're going to put that in there, and we're going to get going. All right? So far, we got the bacon. We're going to go slowly and just render the fat. Let me get my wooden spoon. And in a minute, we're going to put the onion. So onion, always first, unless there's bacon. All right? So maybe that we should make a t-shirt. Onion always first, unless there is bacon. Then it takes second place. We're gonna let the fat render a little bit. And then we're gonna put the chicken in the pan as soon as my temperature is hot. And right now, I don't wanna go in a cold pan, friends, you see? I don't wanna go in a cold pan, just a little bit of olive oil, just enough to cover the bottom of the pan. So then we're gonna put the chicken in there. It's nice and we're gonna get some caramelization. You can use a light meat and I don't use the skin of the chicken. You wanna use the skin, you go right ahead and use the skin of the chicken, but I'll tell you what, you don't need the skin when you're doing something like that. I like to use the skin if I'm gonna grill the chicken or if I'm gonna roast the chicken. But if I'm gonna uh, uh, cook it in a braising environment, the skin is just fat and, uh, and it doesn't have much flavor unless you grill it or unless you roast it in the oven with butter on it. Ooh, no, 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 it's good skin right there. Uh, that's good scooting right there. I sounded like a Justin Wilson. So here we go, folks. We're going to take the chicken. We're going to go in. Now, I'm using some legs and some thighs. And look how big those thighs are. Man, those chicken, I don't know what they were feeding them. <laughs> but those chicken are big chicken. So we're going to take this out of the way. Everything is going well. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, friends. I'm going to move those two parts. I'm going to move this guy right there and this guy right there. So then I'm closer to the pot. All right? That's all I'm gonna do right here. Look, look. Oh, if you could be here right now smelling this bacon, it's amazing. Pancetta is wonderful also. It's just not smoked, it's just cured. Okay, but that'll be delicious as well. Put whatever you want with it and make it as big pieces right here. You see the fat that's rendered enough? I put just a touch of extra fat from the beautiful roasted garlic olive oil that we have. And then I'm gonna put some onion. Now, the onion, you notice, 
They're not very finely diced. And we don't want them finely diced because we're going to cook them for 45 minutes. You see what I mean? If I go and I dice them super, super fine, guess what happened? After 45 minutes, they're going to be nothing left. Make sure you scrape the bottom of the pot so nothing sticks in the bottom of the pot, Franks, okay? You constantly do this. And now what we're doing, we're caramelizing the onion. Now we're going to check the chicken. Look, this is getting all and brown, Frank. This is what we're looking for right there. We're looking for some color. We don't have quite enough. So let's just wait a little bit longer. Eh? Let's just wait a little bit longer. Wait a few more minutes, okay? All right, so let's go back to this pan. Right here, we got the caramelized onion. We're doing good. The onion is starting to caramelize. And that's what we want. Remember, the onion has got to be caramelized so it's sweet. If it's not sweet, what's the sense of putting it in there? Look, I got those little bell peppers right there. You don't have the regular bell peppers. You got those, just regular, regular bell pepper. But this right there, we're going to cut them. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to show you real quick how to cut them. All right, so I'm going to show you this real quick. Let me make sure we're okay in here. We're looking good. The onion is starting to caramelize. They're looking good. Let's check the chicken one more time just in case. Yeah, we can wait another minute. By the time I'm done with the pepper, I think we're going to be fine on the pepper. So look, all you got to do, folks, it's very simple. Right? Cut the pepper in half. Cut it in half again. Cut it in half again. And now we got some seeds. You know, I like to remove all the seeds, my friend. I don't like any seeds in there. So what I do is I go like this, look. I follow and I remove the seeds. And I remove the white membrane as well, you see? Remove the white membrane. And we don't need the seeds. Very simple, right? Eh? Clean up with space. And the best way to clean up the space, friends, is to take one of them kitchen scraper, you see? And voila. Take the scraper, we're done. Let's go back to the chicken. Let's see how we're doing with the chicken, friends. And this is doing really good. This is looking really, really good in here now. My onion are caramelized, so my chicken, I bet. Yes. It's starting to look really good. Yes. Yes, yes, this is what we're looking for here, friends, you see? This is what I'm talking about right there. Uh, we're going to give this a few more minutes, okay? Uh, let's go back to the pot now. So now we're going to put those bell peppers. Like I said, if you have regular bell peppers, it'll be just fine, okay? Just dice them. I like to give it some texture, and those are going to be perfect, you see? They're going to cook. They're sweet. They're delicious. Tomatoes. We're going to put some, some of those whole tomatoes. You don't have any of those, just put regular tomatoes. Don't worry. Here we go, regular tomatoes. Those are for Semarsana. No, they're not Semarsana tomatoes. They're La Valle tomatoes. They're like a Semarsana tomato. They're very sweet. We're going to put this in here right now. Now let's talk about garlic, folks. We're going to put a little garlic in here. And since this is going to braise, we're going to put some whole garlic cloves in here. All right? We're going to put a whole lot of garlic cloves in there. We're going to bring this to boil. Let's see how we're doing with the chicken, my friends. Oh, yeah. Now, this is what I'm talking about right there, friends. This is what I'm talking about right there, friends. Look at this. You see? It's looking beautiful. It's looking beautiful. We're going to let it relax for a minute until we're ready. We're going to put our Kenti Classico. And we're going to put the wine in here, measure carefully. And we're going to let that reduce a little bit. We're going to let it cook. We're going to let it reduce just a little bit. We can let it reduce with our sage and our oregano. And we're going to let that cook just for a couple of minutes. Let it cook. Let the wine evaporate a little bit. And then, and only then, will we add our chicken in there. We're just gonna let the wine evaporate before we do this. Let's just bring it to boil, okay? So the garlic, you can use whole garlic because this is gonna cook for 45 minutes. So for 45 minutes, the garlic is gonna be nice and mild, or you can put the garlic puree. At the last minute, we're gonna put the olives and we're gonna put the uh, uh, lemon zest. And, uh, but we're gonna put that at the end. We don't need to cook that right now. We just need to cook this right now, but we don't need to cook the olives, and we don't need to cook the, the lemon. The lemon, later you put it in, better off you are. 
and the chicken, we're gonna put it in a minute, and we're gonna put a touch of chicken stock. I'm waiting for my wine to come to boil, and reduce a little bit, and then we'll put the rest of the ingredient. So far, you notice I haven't put much salt and pepper. But what I did is I put salt and pepper in the, uh, in the flour of the chicken. But now it's time to put it in. So we're gonna put some salt, some pepper, and then we can adjust the seasoning to the end. We're letting the wine reduce. We're letting that whole mixture reduce. You can smell the wine. By the way, we're using a Kente Classico, but use whatever wine you want to use, as long as it's a good wine, okay? Don't be using a wine you're not willing to drink. If you're not willing to drink it, it's not gonna taste any better after you cook it for 45 minutes. Quite the contrary. So use the wine you're willing to drink, all right? So let's see what we got here, friends. It's going. You see, it's reducing. We're gonna let it reduce a little bit. I can smell the wine. You can smell it. You can smell the whole thing. It's starting to smell really, really good. But we need to let the wine reduce. Whatever you're cooking with wine, you gotta let it reduce unless it's a fortified wine, in which case you don't need to. If you were to use a port wine or a Madeira, you would need to, need to reduce it. We're also gonna use some capers in there, friends. And the capers, like the, le like the olives, like the lemon, they don't need to cook. So we're gonna put them at the last minute. Capers are wonderful. I use the nonpareil caper. They're very small capers. That's what they call the nonpareil. That's the size of it. They're very small capers. You know, capers, if they're allowed to grow, they become a nice white flower. Very interesting, eh? We're gonna put a little tomato puree, but I'm waiting for the wine to let it reduce a little bit first, okay? When the wine is nicely reduced, then we're gonna put, then we're gonna put the, uh, the tomato puree. Just wait a little bit, the chicken is ready to go. So let's just wait a second for the wine to reduce, okay? We're just gonna let about two or three minutes for reduction. Okay, now if we look at the wine as nicely reduced, now I can add a little bit of tomato puree. That's gonna give us some nice consistency. So tomatoes and tomato puree. The tomato puree, it's gonna give us more consistency, otherwise this, it's gonna be too liquid. We're gonna use some of the flour that is on the chicken that's gonna help us thicken somewhat, but it's still gonna be a little too liquid, so the tomato puree will help us with that, all right? Wine has reduced wonderful, you can smell it. It smells delicious. Now we're gonna put a chicken in there, friends. We're gonna take a chicken and put it right in there, and this is what we're talking about, braising. Look how big those size, size are. Man, those chickens must have been like a turkey. <laughs> we're gonna put this right in there, you see? We're gonna let that cook. That's what it should cook. Oh, oh, I didn't tell you. But I left the bone in, friends. Hey, okay, take it easy, Lou. They're going a little too fast for me now. The, um, I left the bone in. You can take the bone out, but I leave the bone in. And the reason why I leave the bone in, friends, is because, first of all, the bone, look at this, oh yeah. First of all, because the bone is going to um, uh, hold the meat together and it won't shrink as much, it won't get as dry. Whenever you're braising a chicken, leave it on the bone, it gives it more flavor from the bone, and it doesn't shrink as much. So, uh, uh, but no, no skin, all right? I'm gonna put a little bit of chicken stock here, folks. I need a little more liquid, so I'm gonna put about a cup and a half of, uh, of chicken stock in here. And of course, this is our homemade chicken stock, and for you guys, chicken stock at home, if you don't have time to make, you can certainly buy a good chicken stock out there. Just buy uh, low-sodium chicken stock. And, uh, and, and if you can't find one, then you should be making one. And how do you make one? Really simple. Download one of our recipe. We have a recipe. Uh, we make a chicken stock from scratch, and we show you also how to cut up the whole chicken in the, in the chicken stock recipe. So if you wanted to buy a whole chicken, because you want to use some of the breast to make it, go right ahead, that's a perfect thing to do. You watch that video for the chicken, uh, chicken stock, cut up the whole chicken, and use that to make your chicken cacciatore or your coco van. That's another recipe than we did. I hope you enjoyed it. All right, folks, we're gonna let this cook, and when it's finished, we're gonna finish it up with the olives, and we're gonna serve this right there, out of the pot, right there on the table. We're gonna serve it maybe with polenta. You can serve it with, with uh, 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 garlic mashed potatoes. You could serve it with noodles, you could serve it with rice, you could serve it with whatever makes you happy. All right, so we'll be right back. We're gonna let that cook slowly, bring it back to boil, and as soon as it's boiling, we're gonna bring it back to boil, and we're gonna let it reduce slowly for 45 minutes to an hour. We're gonna keep an eye on it. The only thing we're gonna do is every so often, we'll just go in like this, and we'll just check it to make sure it doesn't stick in the bottom. That's all we're gonna do, very low. You can also pop it in the oven. It'll be perfectly fine in the oven. It's gonna take longer in the oven, at 375 for maybe an hour and a half. The, really, the, the barometer, then you have to pick, is by the time 
you, you, the meat should fall off the bone by the time it's ready to go. All right? So we're going to let that cook. Go do something. We'll come back in 45 minutes to an hour and see how it goes. All right? All right, friends. 45 minutes, almost an hour, actually. And the chicken is falling off the bone. That means it's ready. So now let's finish it, my friends. What are we going to do? We're going to put the olives. Remember, the olives don't need to cook. They already, they already cure. They're good to go. They just need to get hot. They're going to get hot real quick in there, let me tell you. <laughs> All right? Look at how hot that is. So then capers. Let's put the capers in there, friends. You see, look look how small they are. They're called nonpareil capers. Nonpareil. So here we go. Little capers. Put a little more. Put a little less. It's up to you. And here we have it. We're looking good. We're looking good. We're looking good. Oh, yeah, baby. It's going to be good. And then, and then lemon. The last ingredient is this. Now, by now, all of you that have been watching my channel, I know you know how to use this guy. I know you know how to use it. Michael Plain Grater. You see all those people do this? Whenever you see somebody do this, go to the other channel. <laughs> We're gonna go, we put the tools on top, and we go back and forth like we're playing the violins. See, back and forth, like we're playing the violins. And if you notice, my friends, the lemon zest, most of it stays in the tool, right? It's here, look. What do you gotta do? Bam! Every time I say bam, I think of ammo. Lovely man. Fond memories of Errol, Emil. He had the opportunity to meet him a few times. What a gentleman. Yeah. So here we go, friends. Look at this. Look at this. Absolutely wonderful, friends. Now, don't be afraid to put some lemon in there, man. I'm telling you. This right there, friends, is going to be so much flavor. So much flavor. And here we have it, friends. This right there, put chopped parsley on top. This right there, friends, is the one of the easiest, one of the most amazing chicken dish you can ever make. And look, that was really simple, right? Everybody in family, I'm gonna test it. You can serve it with polenta. You can serve it with pasta, like papadale. Papadale pasta would be delicious, right? You can serve it with rice. You can serve it with the soft polenta recipe that I make. Go online and go check out that soft polenta recipe, folks. I promise you, you're gonna love it. Look, I just wanna show you real quick. I just wanna show you a leg right there. We're gonna take it. I love the olives, too. Put it with the olives. Don't put the olives. Don't put the, put whatever you want with it. But let me tell you, I wanna show you. I wanna show you. I wanna make sure the camera can go in there and show you, friends. Look at this, the meat is falling off the bone. You see, look, look how beautiful that is, friends. Look how gorgeous that is. You see it? Look at this. This literally falls off the bones. I could almost cut it with my fork. You take it right there, folks. And you know what I love? I love the peppers, look. Look at the peppers, you see? You see the peppers off there? Yeah. Mmm. 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 And look at the pepper. I, I wouldn't even have to cut them. They're so soft. Mmm. It's so nice. Oh, yeah. See, sometimes we cut them too small. Right? And we cut them too small. And you know what happens when you cut them too small? They, you can't even test them. They're too small. They're delicious. They're sweet. Mmm. If you can find those little peppers, find them. Otherwise, just take them. Mmm. Mmm. I love my job. Don't I have the best job? I really do think about this. I've been doing this for 50 years and I like it today more than I did it yesterday. And, and yesterday was more than the day before. Every day it gets better. That's the beautiful thing about cooking. More you do it, more you love, more you do, better at it you get. And better at it you get, more you love it. Folks, I hope you make this fabulous recipe. Remember, subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to ring the bell so you get a a notification every Thursday when we put on a new video. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next week with another fantastic recipe. Thanks a lot for watching.